Okay. Hello and welcome to the fifth annual Ramsgate International Film and Television Festival. We are, of course, online again this year, but the silver lining is that we get to share the very best of independent cinema with a global audience. Um, there is a very diverse programme of films, all available online for free between the 3rd and the 6th of June. My name is Alwyn Collins and I'm delighted to be accompanied by the director and general brains <laughs> behind the documentary feature Cryptopia, Bitcoin, Blockchain and the Future of the Internet, Torsten Hoffman, sorry. It's great to meet you finally, hello. Hello, uh, thanks for having me and I uh, look forward to this. So um, um, just um, feel free to um, ask any controversial questions about this controversial <laughs> topic. So just um, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got a list of A questions and some sneaky ones at the end. Um, so firstly, congratulations on such a wonderful film. Um, it's really quite impressive what you've done, I think. Um, I was taken aback by the depth of your research and the depth of the um, investigation, but you also sort of litter the film with these sparkling moments of humour, which makes it very watchable, um, especially for a Bitcoin newbie. <laughs> it's quite funny because I watched the film um, as yeah, a somewhat cryptocurrency beginner, and now I feel like I'm harbouring a nascent interest <laughs> which is quite hilarious. Um, so just to get started, could you explain what the film is about and your inspiration for making it? Yeah, well, first, thanks for your comments. Um, and let me just uh, maybe, uh, you know, say, say that in, in many ways, the, the, the film is kind of like for the crypto community um, and it's almost impossible imposs to make everyone happy because there's so many different uh, subgroups uh, within it. And, and I think you probably have some questions about that. Um, but obviously, I also try to reach a mainstream audience, uh, one that is not quite that informed or knowledgeable about um, crypto quite yet. And um, I'm glad that you... Um, uh, well, enjoyed it, found it funny at points, but also, I mean, a film like this can only be the start of like a longer research uh, on, onto it. So, so I'm, I'm happy that it worked. And actually, there's, there's going to be a TV version where um, uh, it's shorter, usually the TV version. It's also, it, it takes away all these, um, uh, you know, too technical and too complicated uh, bits of the film, uh, the feature length. So that is kind of, kind of uh, common. And um, yeah, so I mean, my, my journey has been um, uh, kind of um, since 2013, 14, I kind of started down that rabbit hole and it, it's still, I, I still haven't um, figured it all out, but um, this is, this is a, um, follow up to my first uh, documentary which is called bitcoin the end of money as we know it and uh, about five years later so um that one was made in 2014 released in 2015 and uh, this new film cryptopia is um, kind of like a follow-up what has ha ha happened in this industry um since then so it, obviously the price has increased the price of bitcoin has increased hundredfold there's hundred times more projects out there hundred more uh, times more people working on it um and so i thought it was um a uh, time to do a catch-up a follow-up yeah, that will make sense. And I want to watch the your first film as well. Um, I think, yeah, watching it, um, it really is quite crazy as someone who's yeah new to the community, as it's called. Um, you seem to be interviewing all the big dogs. It's amazing. Um, I think most notably Vitalik, the founder of Ethereum, who's just recently joined the Billionaires Club, I saw. Um, so how was this process for you? I get the impression that you've, you've kind of developed a relationship with these people. And I'm kind of wondering personally how it's been for you. Yeah, um, that's, that's a good one because um, I'm actually um, starting work on, on my, my next project that will 
I don't know, uh, take some, some years to continue. And I don't have that network in that particular uh, community yet. So with, with the uh, crypto and blockchain world, I kind of um, started early. So it was kind of easy to get everyone on board, right? And, and get, get them excited and in front of the camera. And then it was much easier uh, a couple of years later to do a follow-up because I had kind of established a, a reputation and a name um, uh, for myself. Um, but I think, yeah, for independent filmmakers, it is kind of a struggle sometimes, right? You can't make a doc documentary, I don't know, about American politics and then don't have any of the big uh, players in it, right? Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge, but at the end of the day, you see, um, in the crypto world, all these people kind of benefit from more people getting involved, right? In, in a way, it's a cult uh, or, or it's, it's, it's almost like the more people hear and know about Bitcoin, the richer they get because then more people buy Bitcoins, for example, or all the other kind of projects. So, so in a way, um, it's, it's um, in their interest to be in, uh, speaking about their projects, right? And this might be slightly cynical, but just going on from that, um, what's your sort of interest in making the film if it's a kind of a promotion of Bitcoin, is, does that feed into it for you? Yeah, look, um, uh, that's a super fair question. And, and I, I do think, um, I mean, I have to ask you, but, but I do think I come across as someone who is excited and, and, and enthusiastic about the, the space, right? So I'm, I'm not, um, uh, you know, cr criticizing um, the, the, the movement as a whole, but I am one of the few voices actually in this world that is asking tough questions. And I am, you know, kind of saying, well, this will probably not work and why do we do need this? So, so I'm kind of um, trying to get a little bit of skepticism in it. And in both of my films, I actually do have um, critics who are uh, getting their voice, voices heard. And look, it's, it's up to everyone, obviously, to make up their own opinion. The, the film is certainly not investment advice. Um, but at the same time, um, I think it, it's starting down. It's a good starting point for, for a journey down the rabbit hole, you know? Yeah, no, definitely. Um, for if you could just say for people that haven't watched the documentary, why should they care about crypto? Yeah, so the way I would start explaining or start um, uh, yeah, convincing people <laughs> is actually not talk about crypto or, uh, or Bitcoin first. I would first kind of question um, the current system that we all so used to and so kind of um, addicted to, right? So mm -hmm. um, once people understand that the British pound isn't actually um, backed by gold, that the British pound is just being printed out of thin air and, and, and basically the governments or central banks can't decide on a whim how to, um, you know, how much money uh, to, to print. Um, banks can uh, also uh, privately create money. Uh, banks can lend out the money that you deposit multiple times. So there's a lot of things that, that are kind of going wrong with our current financial system. And uh, some bit Bitcoiners would say it's kind of crumbling, right? It, it, it's time for, for um, the, the big uh, um, awakening moment because the global money supply has, um, I don't know, quadrupled or something in the last um, 10 years. Um, and it's, it's just crazy how much new money is flooded into it. And, and hence, there's a risk of inflation, right? So, so things like that, um, uh, or discussions like this, um, start make it much more easier um, to then talk about Bitcoin for example, um, which is highly, highly scarce, right? So you have the opposite system. Instead of the money supply going up, the money supply um, uh, goes down over time, mm -hmm. the, the fresh uh, minting of, of Bitcoin. So that's how I would start. But I, again, I mean, it's a long rabbit hole journey. Um, but I do think, I mean, look, this is an industry that's now revolutionizing finance and, and, and money. And, and whether you like it or not, whether you're going to buy Bitcoin or not, it doesn't matter. It's, it's a thing. And if you want to be informed about it, it you know, I, I think the film is probably a good, a good way to start. Mm -hmm. And I also, I feel like, yeah, sentiment towards that sort of idea of this, um, firstly, just realising the power structures behind our financial um, system is really important just for, especially young people, um, to realise. And I think it does feel as if there's a sort of movement towards... Um, this sort of yeah realization. Um, I think, especially with events like GameStop happening recently, um, and the whole kind of Robin Hood fiasco. Do you think people are 
And I mean, obviously, because of how big Bitcoin's got, do you feel like this sort of interest is, um, it's just product of the internet being here? Or do you think something's actually changing on a societal level? Yeah, wow, that's, that's a deep question. I love that question. <laughs> we, we could talk about this for hours. But I, I, it seems to be kind of like the, the right moment, the right kind of, um, it's in, in the zeitgeist, right? And, mm -hmm. and um, five years earlier, Bitcoin might have not worked because we weren't quite ready for it. Um, um, and also, I, I think... I think it's also a generational thing, right? Where, where, where like uh, maybe the, the boomer generation that is kind of, uh, you know, just hanging on uh, uh, onto the grips of power, um, they don't understand this Bitcoin thing. It just doesn't make sense to them. Whereas like, uh, like I, I have friends with kids and, and those kids, they play online games all the time and, and exchange virtual currency or buy uh, virtual goods. And for them, it is something digital, but it can also be valuable. For them, it's kind of natural. So, so I think uh, the, the more people um, grow up, with the internet the more it makes sense to have like internet currencies and 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 systems built on on the the internet standards rather than the old um, institutions and actually all this was ha was was um part of my first film bitcoin the end of money as we know which is now on youtube for free Every, everyone can just um look at it um and and one example is just um you know sending money overseas i mean that's just like how difficult it is and how much um, exchange fees the banks charge you or how, how, how much uh, the time it costs to, to send money uh, from from one country to the next is just um, uh, ridiculous in the, in the age of the internet, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's weird because obviously Bitcoin was such a new idea when um, uh, the white paper was published by the person. I forgot. Satoshi, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, on the cryptography blog, it's like, it's obviously such a incredible innovative idea but it's also it really makes sense common sense wise and it's it's all about efficiency right it's about cutting the kind of middleman out um and creating yeah, a system of trust so it, it i feel like the booming generation will kind of have to get used to it because it just makes more sense yeah, I mean, um, you're 100 percent right. It's all about cutting out the middleman. The middleman could be a bank, could be a PayPal, could be um, your central bank or the government. So it, it's anti-state, anti-bank in many ways. But of course, now you see the financial services industry to jump onto the the, the bandwagon. Right now, Visa and Mastercard offer services. All the banks try to um, jump on it. And um, so, so it, it's tricky. And, and to be honest, a lot of these Bitcoin or sorry, crypto currency exchanges like Coinbase are kind of like banks in this new world so it's kind of mm -hmm. like we're, we are replacing the old banks and exchanging them for new so which is kind of like one of my my, my criticisms um i wouldn't necessarily say though um uh, bitcoin is more efficient mm -hmm. um i mean it's, it's, it's i mean we could talk about this uh, for long but but i mean there, there might be other cryptocurrencies are more faster, more cheaper uh, to, to transact. So it's not really about this. Uh, what, what Bitcoin now, after 10, 12 years, um, has really be, be become is kind of this digital gold uh, um, investment asset class, right? Which didn't uh, um, exist um, even five or six years ago. So it's, it's kind of a new development, I, I believe. Um, and then let's not forget, I mean, when Satoshi first published that white paper, I and mean, this was not immediately understood. It took five years to become a thing. And in fact, in the beginning, it was just drug dealers who used a Bitcoin to buy illegal things uh, on the internet, right? I mean, and, and by the way, that's, that's a lot of times like new, new technologies really start at the fringe and they don't get accepted. They don't get understood. And it takes many, many years to develop kind of that, that um, uh, yeah, uh, movement. Mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of interested in your personal view um because yeah obviously you sort of probe a lot in the in the documentary how um crypto has this sort of um people power um grassroots um kind of yeah internet which i think goes along with quite a lot of like internet culture at the moment anyway um it has this persona, um, but then, yeah, there is this inherent contradiction there because as you um, investigate the 
corporations like BMW and the banks, um, loads of major banks and hedge funds are kind of developing either their own crypto or putting a lot of research in. Um, and yeah, I'm just kind of wondering what your, if you had to give a prediction, which I know is really unfair, um, but just what's your personal sort of take on how crypto could sit politically and will it be completely co-opted? Yeah. Wow, you really have done your, your homework. You're, you're much more than a newbie. These are deep questions. So, so um, a couple of things here. So the, the, the first, I, I think um, the, one of the other ironies that you hinted at, but you didn't um, say it. So one of the other ironies, in my view, is that we are trying to get rid of the old guard and, and, and the old, um, uh, you know, uh, rich banks or uh, governments uh, being in control. But, but with, with Bitcoin and the other cryptocurrencies, we are kind of creating crypto billionaires. And, 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 and some of these people who are literally starting currencies, right, become the super rich in, in the, these new systems. So that is something we, we, we should, you know, expose and, and, and talk about. Um, now, you asked me, how does the future look like? So I, I do think that a few of these um, blockchain protocols like Bitcoin, digital gold, like Ethereum as sort of like an operating system for a decentralized finance um, uh, system, um, those will stick around. They will become huge. They will um, maybe not replace, but they will def definitely empower um, a transaction that we will have over the internet, right? The internet is, is growing up, up, has grown up. There's still billions of new users uh, being um, onboarded. And this is what's going to be much, much more easier with these technologies, right? Because a 14-year-old kid in Nigeria, he can't get, uh, he or she can't get a bank account. Um, and, and in some countries, uh, if you're a girl or a woman, you can't get a bank account, but um, uh, anyone with a phone can get a, a crypto wallet, right? So so the, the onboarding of the next billions of users on the internet is much easier. So I think it does have a, a legitimate place um, in, in this world. Uh, politically, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not smart enough to, to, to see how it will play out politically, because clearly um, it's not like Bitcoin will replace place the dollar or the pound, right? I mean, the, the pound works pretty good for you, you and I, right? Even if there's higher inflation. So I, I, I don't buy into that vision anymore that, you know, cryptocurrency will replace. However, they will challenge. They will challenge. The Bitcoin might become a reserve currency in some central bank's balance sheets. They already are on some companies' balance sheets with Tesla and, and other companies. Um, Square just announced some big numbers as well. So um, I, I think it, 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 it's slowly happening, but that doesn't mean that the old system will break down. <laughs> no, I hope it does. <laughs> um, wow, yeah, that's all very interesting. So I guess, um, just following on from that, yeah, do you think you've had a slightly, um, because obviously the name of the documentary is Cryptopia, and we have all these amazing sort of ideas of, um, yeah, beautiful utopian ideas of society. Have has the kind of journey made you more cynical? It kind of sounds like it has. Um, but is that fair? Or? Yeah. Um, I am, again, I am a huge believer and I do think that things like Bitcoin and Ethereum will stick around, become a major um, part of this, of the economy in the next uh, decades for sure. But I also am very um, cynical about what I'm seeing. You, you just mentioned this it's kind of GameStop uh, dynamic, right? Where, where people on the internet kind of hype up a stock uh, and, and it just, just to screw a hedge fund or just to uh, become rich, which is totally fine. Huh? People speculate and, and they want to uh, risk their money and uh, to become rich or, or go broke. That's completely fine. But I think especially in the cryptocurrency universe, uh, we see too much of that and, and too much uh, bad actors. And um, recently, I don't know whether you followed this Doge Coin. So Dogecoin mm -hmm. is literally yeah. created by an Australian as a joke. Um, it is not scarce. So it's kind of the anti-Bitcoin. anti, anti um, uh, Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is kind of a limited supply, the, the 21 million uh, coins that, are, that will ever be created. Uh, we're, we're now at, I don't know, almost 19 million of them. So, so it's getting fewer and fewer left, right? And Dogecoin is the opposite. Like every minute, there's going to be more and more, and this is never ending. And, and still, these um, uh, traders on, on TikTok and influence everybody, and even Elon Musk, talks about Dogecoin is a new thing, right? Um, but 
I think that kind of thing is quite dangerous because a lot of people might lose a lot of money. Um, and, and similarly with NFTs, like these, these non-fungible tokens that is now kind of revolutionizing the, the art world, which is a very empowering and positive um, development in the world, especially for creatives, right? But mm -hmm. at the same time, I think a lot of people will burn their fingers and, and lose money because there's just too much hype. So I, I've become a little bit more cynical and, and in many ways, even more of a believer against uh, uh, more of a believer for the fundamentally, I believe, strong place in, in, in this ecosystem, which is Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and a couple of others. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, that's all, that's all really interesting. Um, kind of going on with the kind of um, theme of sort of utopia, but then maybe kind of um, false utopia. Um, the third part of the documentary um, is entitled The Future of the Internet um, and how the internet itself could become um, governed by these yeah, same rules of peer-to-peer -peer decentralized network. Um, I was really interested um, when you were speaking about the eras of computing, um, the first being mainframe, where there's like one central computer and all servers are reliant on it. And then secondly, desktop, where we all own our own computer um, and use that to connect to each other. And then cloud, where we're at at the moment with big players like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram um, dominating and a sort of service culture coming into that where we're clients and then we obtain a service in exchange for privacy um, and things like location and stuff. And then the fourth era is kind of, it's this amazing kind of like dazzling idea of a decentralized computing, um, which to me just sounds amazing. I think because probably because my generation has this huge sort of nostalgia trip for anything 90s or the year 2000s, um, where it is this yeah, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network um, with no sort of privacy violations, um, data collected, um, yeah, or advertising, no ads. Um, but yeah, taking the slightly cynical line, where do you think the impetus for internet 3.0 will come from in a kind of age maybe where it seems at the moment that people aren't necessarily bothered about their data being found. Yeah. So the the internet kind of had this original vision as well to be to to, to kind of um, decentralize all of us and we can all talk to each other and free free flow of information. But it turned out to be kind of a, a nightmare almost where like Google and Facebook is now more powerful and Amazon certainly more powerful, more rich than many countries, right? Uh, which is mm -hmm. totally crazy. Um, and, and, and so maybe blockchain technology, which again, takes out the middleman kind of we we don't need the central powers anymore and um, maybe we can build this this internet based on blockchain technology and and, and connect us all without those um uh, powerful middlemen who extract data and get rich from it um so that's that's a utopian vision and and you're 100 percent right because most people billions of people don't really seem to care that um facebook is selling them ads or um uh, google is is taking uh, you know uh, all these these um information from them so they can serve better ads to you. Um, in fact, even if our elections are being kind of uh, manipulated or if, um, mm. you know, fake news, I mean, yeah, people are outraged, but we still use these services. Yeah. So is there a need for this whole future of the internet on the blockchain, Web3? Um, and I, I, I'm not sure, but you know, what might actually make it happen is again, that kind of speculation, uh, getting rich um, an idea and, and maybe not getting rich in terms of, um, oh, I can, I, I can um, make 
money in dollar in dollar terms, but maybe maybe it's like uh, kind of like bonus systems or collecting points or reward points. So so I'm giving you a couple of examples. So there are uh, web browsers that are um, not extracting uh, like information from you. They actually uh, um, giving you a cryptocurrency um, um, that is generated by that system in the browser. And each time you browse or each day you browse, you get a little bit more. So it's not like you're going to get rich from it, but it's it's a mechanism, right? Um, I'm currently speaking to a company that um, is kind of in the um, fashion uh, creative uh, world, right? And each time you like something, other than like on Instagram, you don't get anything for it. But on this platform, you would get coins uh, from it, right? So we, we can create these systems where suddenly people do um, um, uh, kind of profit or, mm. or uh, generate income um, from and with their data. And, and I think maybe there's going to be two or three of these services that will really break out and maybe, um, yeah, change the way we search on the internet, browse on the internet, uh, share um, photos on the internet, possibly. Yeah, that, that really makes sense, actually. I hadn't thought of that. Um, but yeah, that kind of impetus point system. Yeah, I can see that. That's, yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, a bit of a tongue in cheek question. Um, will bankers be extinct in 30 years? <laughs> um, yeah, look, I mean, uh, bankers have been around ever since uh, the, the the start of capitalism. Uh, in fact, in many ways, they invented the kind of capitalism in the you know um, Renaissance uh, Italian times and um, later in, in in the Netherlands. So I, I do think bankers do provide very valuable services, um, but they've over the last generation, let's say, have kind of, instead of becoming like a service to industry, to the consumer, they've kind of, uh, kind of gone overboard, right? And speculated with the money, went bust and got bailed out and got bonuses, right? And, and, and things like that. So, so I think we're going to go back to, 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 to the old days where like uh, financial service is just one thing that you do, but whatever you do is actually the, 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 the more important uh, part of the industry and banking is just more, more so supporting. Um, and I think most of the, or many of these old school bankers will have to adopt to a new world. And the new world is more connected, is more social, is more uh, maybe blockchain based or crypto based, right? And, and I can see every day the news releases where, more banks um, are offering to buy Bitcoin to their customers or they're issuing credit cards that have like um, uh, cryptocurrencies and as a um, reward structure. Again, that's, that's exactly what we we're just talking about. Maybe people are not interested in really taking their, 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 their money and putting it into Bitcoin. But if I offer them a credit card that gives them 1% back as a cash reward in Bitcoin, why not use it, right? Um, so, so those kind of services are very clever. And I think um, the, the future of bankers will be um, yeah, more, more in that vein. And I hope as well, um, yeah, what we were speaking about earlier is that even our politicians don't, seem to be speaking the truth and we don't necessarily care i mean a lot of people do but there seems to be um yeah this kind of um sort of confusion between sort of yeah truth and yeah can i can i just say say something uh, profound <laughs> about this <laughs> yeah um, because you, you're kind of uh, pointing pointing the finger on something that's really wrong with our times right with, mm -hmm. with our societies um and and i think in in uh, maybe in england and in america that's that's very bad but certainly in other places as well and you know it, it will only get worse with fake um, media and like synthetic media that, that uh, can be created with, with new technology. And you can't even realize, is this a real person or not anymore? Did this politician really say it or not? Because, you know, you can just take somebody's voice and, and, and recreate it and that it really sounds like this person said, said something. So what is, what is actually true, right? Um, and, and maybe blockchain technology can provide um, the, the antidote or the, the solution because, um, maybe we should have started this conversation with how does the blockchain actually work? How does, so, so, so let me just give me one minute to simplify it. Um, but so basically Bitcoin is, is, is a system of, um, is an accounting system, a ledger that instead of um, um, the, the bank 
having one ledger, one centralized ledger where you have debits and credits. Um, it's kind of a, a decentralized database called the blockchain um, that is run on tens, tens of thousands of computers all around the world. Everybody runs this synchron uh, synchronous and everybody agrees on this is the stand of, of the ledger and I send you some Bitcoin and you send it somewhere else and everybody has the same ledger, right? That means once some information is once recorded on the blockchain and it's distributed on thousands of computers, there's no doubt that this actually happened. Right now, we could, in theory, also use this technology to put um, data in it, information, a video, a, a, a patent. Right? Um, um, okay, I own this copyright, and, and now there's all these um, entrepreneurs and all these startups trying to, um, you know, to, to figure out what else can we do with blockchain te technology, and, and potentially we could prevent, um, you know, fake news and, and, and people lying because we can point to the real original idea or the original video or something like that. But it, I mean, this is a huge job. I mean, this this could make or break societies right and it, w it won't happen overnight mm, yeah no um there was a bit in the in cryptopia i was i think it was speaking about um which i found yeah really intriguing was the chinese student who was um reporting harassment or assault on campus um and i correct me if I'm wrong I think she posted it online and then it was um it was taken down by the sort of university authority and then she posted it in the blockchain and it is this completely unchangeable sort of concrete database yeah. ledger which is quite amazing yeah so it does seem that there's this um relationship between the blockchain and truth and honesty which i think yeah and and again i think this this is something that younger generations are much more um attuned to um this this whole censorship idea because the the, the the people in power they don't get censored right um but if you have unpopular opinions or your your favorite um, uh, journalist um oh, oh sorry maybe the, the journalist that criticized this this ruler or the other ruler um um and you know, even the president of the United States uh, got banned from, from Twitter and, and Facebook uh, 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 not, not that long ago. Um, so I think this, this kind of censorship um, resistant technology that is uh, a blockchain um, can be very, very powerful. Um, and and it's, it's very utopian. But at the same time, I mean, of course, this comes with a lot of pitfalls as well. I mean, there are some uh, social media networks that kind of say, okay, no, no, you won't get censored here, right? And, and, and mm -hmm. what's going on on these networks is like you get the, the um, racists and the, you know, uh, homophobic people and like the, the, the bad side of humanity there as well. So, so we as a society must learn what do we actually want. But I, I mean, if, if it was up to me, I don't think I would want that decision to be made in the Facebook headquarters and the Twitter headquarters. I think we need some something better and, and maybe blockchain can play a part in that. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, I think, I think because I'm relatively new to this, it's all kind of, <laughs> I'm still in the kind of really like wide-eyed sort of, um, yeah, getting quite excited about it um, in a kind of utopian, maybe slightly naive way. But, um, I, one question that I thought I kind of had to ask, um, because I think it's got quite a, it's a lot of press recently, is the um, environmental impact and kind of is there a way around this? Is this, um, surely there's a way they could do it without, um, yeah, yeah, using that much electricity or... Yeah, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good and fair um, question. And um, to be honest, most blockchain projects um, are solving or have solved this issue already. So they run um, their uh, databases in a decentralized manner without using these uh, super um, high energy uh, consuming um, Bitcoin miners. Um, however, for Bitcoin itself, which is like the 800 pound gorilla, I mean, I, I, Bitcoin is like the 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 biggest project, the first project, the biggest brand name in that space. Um, and for this use case, um, uh, Bitcoin mining will have to happen. This proof of work needs to happen. And these miners need to be incentivized to run these machines and to transact all these uh, transactions um, uh, and, and to get rewarded in Bitcoin. So that, that kind of won't change. In fact, I think the energy consumption will only go up. But um, let me put a positive spin on it. Um, 
this market is so highly efficient, the person with the most computer power and the cheapest energy will get the most Bitcoin. So there's billions of dollars being invested in making these Bitcoin farms. Now think about where do you get the cheapest energy? In about 100 countries around the world, that's already solar. Right, and it's already like maybe hydrothermal or, or or some places somewhere in Iceland where people don't even use that energy. So this is where um, these these Bitcoin mines actually um, be, being um, built. Um, also, if you are um, developing a new um, solar farm somewhere in the desert, you might not have enough. Um, you know, people to actually use it there. So you put a Bitcoin mine there and then you can start, start uh, you know, doing this, which basically what I'm trying to say here is um, Bitcoin might actually accelerate the, 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 the energy transformation to more sustainable because, you know, you'll be, you'll be silly to, to not use um, solar because it's the cheapest form of energy. I see. And that will kind of, yeah, fuel the innovation that way. Yeah. But, but, but um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to deny that, you know, there's also a huge amount of, um, you know, uh, coal-fired um, uh, plants in, in, in China contributing to climate change. I mean, that's happening. But the TV behind me is also on standby. And if you add up all the TVs in the world, there's probably much higher energy consumption um, than, than the Bitcoin network. So, so I mean, it's, it's, it's always um, give and take. And this is maybe one of those, those things that the Bitcoin um, industry hasn't really um, been so good at communicating because, I mean, this energy... Um, question has been around for five, six uh, years and I've, I've, I keep answering these uh, questions. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's funny. I guess you, you probably have experience of this, but it feels like the news is sometimes kind of on repeat and then every kind of couple of years, this question kind of pops up if our news cycle is kind of rotating. Yeah. And, and you know, um, I'm going to go back to that generational thing again, but, but um, um, hear me out. So, um, I heard somewhere recently that you need like 200 hours to really understand what Bitcoin is and how the blockchain works, 200 hours. So the people who are already rich and they're like um, super busy with, with their uh, you know, lives and careers and with their current financial, um, uh, everything is fine. They won't invest that time. Whereas the younger generations, um, they, they're still learning, they're eager and they're, 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 they're trying to, to learn. And that's, that's where um, the, the, the weakness of media kind of plays in because the journalist gets asked, oh, write another article about Bitcoin. I heard something Thing. okay so they have about two hours to invest and they always come up with the same three okay this is the price but it also crashed uh, it's, it's energy uh, intensive and you know two or three other things it's always kind of the, the same stories um and and i think if you maybe my film is kind of like a good um reminder that, that there's so many narratives i think there's like 25 different narratives in, in, in this in this industry and each one is worth digging dozens of dozens of hours and maybe you're interested in censorship maybe you're interested in the investment side maybe you're interested in the energy side and, and there's lots of interesting stuff happening and again my film is just the start of the rabbit hole no yeah it truly is i can't recommend it highly enough um I told my brother to watch it and he just watched it and he really loved it. Um, so yeah, no. Oh, it, thanks for that. Thank you for that. It, it was hard work to make. <laughs> yeah, no, I can imagine. I can imagine. It's, yeah. I, I make films, but they're so simple. <laughs> they're, they've really got a couple of elements. And so that was kind of like, whew, mind blowing. Um, on that note, where, what's next for you? You kind of hinted that you were, making something um that you didn't necessarily have as many sort of connections or leads with um can you tell us what that is or kind of what questions are preoccupying you at the moment yeah um so as an independent documentary filmmaker um there's many ways how to uh, you know uh, make documentaries or get paid or, or like um, create content but i think what i've learned from my last two big projects those two um, bitcoin and blockchain films is that for me it's good to have um a, a kind of like a, a brand and an audience um, that likes to watch my films. And the more you have, the, the, the more successful you're going to be as an independent entrepreneur filmmaker. So, so I, I have to kind of stick to, to, to that idea. So I'm, I'm not going to start making films about polis, politics or food, right? Um, but technology, I'm clearly a technology ent ent enthusiast and um, I'm, I'm interested in and hopefully good at um, explaining new 
new industries, new technologies that are, that are about to appear, right? And, and the one that I'm most excited about at the moment is the space industry. Everyone talks about Elon Musk. Everyone talks about the rockets launching. But what does it actually mean? How does it transform our lives if from... Uh, a thousand satellites in the air, we're soon, soon going to have 100,000. Um, and if, if the price of bringing a kilogram into or orbit, um, it decreases by 99%. What kind of uh, things can we build in space that we can't build here? And what, what, what does it mean that we go back to the moon after 50 years? So there's a lot of interesting question. And, and the challenge that I have, as always, as a filmmaker, is how do you finance this? Uh, how, how do you get access to the, 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 the big dogs, <laughs> like you, you said earlier? And that I still have to kind of figure out, but it gets you know, the, the positive news here for filmmakers is it gets easier each time right so because you you are you can tap into some of the the people who have licensed your film before so you can you can show oh i, I showed my film on this festival and and you know want to you want to support maybe my next film things like that brilliant well i look forward to it um thank you so much i feel like we've had a really great chat and i hope that's been enjoyable and illuminating um to the audience um thank you so much torsten that was great no thanks and all the best with the festival um it's uh, starting soon right yep third of june to the sixth and it's all available online through the portal for free which is yes. brilliant so yeah yes and and I can I, I can I can't tell you how um, important these these festivals still are for for film festivals and uh, sorry for filmmakers um, and and um, for anyone, anyone um, listening or watching this um, you know you can really support the the the, the creator economy the the independent filmmakers. Um, by just you know liking or supporting or finding us on Twitter or Facebook or wherever they, they might be and, and just um, uh, sh uh, sh you know sharing it with, with some friends it really makes a difference yeah. Thank you. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, and I hope the film Cryptopia keeps on gaining momentum because I think it's a good thing if more people watch it. It's only a good thing, which is, yeah, which is brilliant. So thank, thank you so much. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Bye-bye.